Hey, good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in Ormond Beach, um, a job that we've been to before. You've seen us where we put in the footer pipe in here in this crawl space, and then we put the pump in, and of course that pump ran for 5,400 hours because it sets below sea level. So it burned out, we put a new pump in. What we're going to do is actually raise the level of the crawl space. We're going to raise this grade up, and it's a, it's a good process because you can only bring one bucket in at a time, but we've got some secrets and some tips um, that we like to share with you and show you how we can do this pretty easily. And uh, it's going to take about six, maybe seven, eight yards of soil to bring this up eight inches. And what that will do is allow us to raise the sump pump up so that it doesn't sit down below sea level where the groundwater is just constant. And take a look. This is, this is a good project. Take a look. So we're getting some more sand for the crawl space. We're here at Stone Plus. Great little business here. They, it's not quite a yard that they put in here, but it's uh, what they call a yard. <laughs> and these guys are real good. It comes really quick. We're gonna put two yards more in here and that should top off the back of that crawl space. Should be no problem. kind of hard for the loader to see because the sun's right in his eyes if you see him trying to get it into the trailer. But they'll get it in there. It'll be great. We'll get one more scoop there. <laughs> That's good. He's coming over here on this side because you can see how bright that sun is. It's really, really bright. It's looking real good. If you're going to get sand, try make sure that you get good clean fill sand to fill up your crawl space. Um, we're going to also get a load of gravel here later and we're going to use that to top off on top of the sand. It should work really good. And it's cold here. And this, this morning it's right at 33 degrees. Quite warm in the sun. It'll warm up in the mid 60s later on this afternoon. and. Uh, but right now that sand's kind of cold and wet, so it sticks. You can see it sticking in the air. So what we're doing is we're creating what I call sliders. And this is just something that we can set the bucket of gravel or dirt and we can just push it and you'll see when we get down in the crawl space how well this works yeah it takes a few minutes to you know set set this up and you spend a little bit more money buying some plywood but we can reuse this over and over again and we used to do this in charlotte because there's a lot more crawl spaces but watch as he flips it over and you can see we just made a chute and we can set the bucket on that chute and just push it and it'll it'll slide eight feet no problem then we'll drop it onto the next chute and we can go all the way around the crawl space once this is created and we get them down in the crawl space it'll move really fast and to do this what we did was we bought half inch plywood and we got some one by three furrings and you can see we're just screwing them together just a few screws that's all you need doesn't have to be anything perfect you know we're not building a shelf we're just building a, a slider, that's all it is. Okay, so you can see how this system works. Even if it's uphill, you can see it's running uphill, it's really hard to carry a bucket in the crawl space. You can only move it a couple of feet and it really wears you out. But if you make a slider, see how I can shove it? And it moves a great distance, a lot easier. See the little bump right there? Just drops right off. We can go all the way to the end. It just slides down through. I'm sorry, I'm doing it with one hand. When the guys come in here, I'll show you a better picture of it. <laughs> but we can get it all the way to the back. And then we just take the bucket and we dump it out. Works the same way with gravel. You know, you got a bucket of gravel. This is so much easier um, to move that bucket by hand. You can move it, you know, a couple of feet. You have to pick it up. We're just sliding it across the slider. And you can see, Got our buckets ready to come in, bring them in, put them on the slider, push it. This is a great little simple trick that you might need to use. Maybe, maybe not. So you can see you get several buckets lined up on your slider and, oops, 
<laughs> old bucket. And then we can just put our hand down here and push it. And it slides easily. See how quickly? We'll slide them all the way down to the end, dump them out, get some more sand. Remember what we're doing is we're actually raising the grade of this crawl space. Why? Over the years, all the sump pumps that they've put in here, they've sucked out the soil. <laughs> you can see how much higher it is in the back than it is here. And now this pump, you can see it down there, that actually sits below sea level. And at high tide, that groundwater rises up and it burns out their pump. So we need to just raise this up about eight inches, just through this section right in here, that's all. And this is where the water has been sucked down. We raise this up about eight inches so that it matches this side over here. And then we can raise the pump up a little bit. Won't so quite as this is the first time these guys are doing this. And you can see, you just slide the bucket. See how easy that is? And another guy brings them down. He just brings the buckets in and puts them on the slider. And then we just dump them out. Yep. Just keep piling them up on top of each other. Then we'll just throw those buckets back to the back. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah, it does take some labor, but that slider will really help you guys if you need to use it. If you need to do something like this, that really helps a lot. Really helps a lot. So it's like the bucket brigade. Remember, one guy's bringing sand to the buckets, bring it to the beginning of the crawl space, and then another guy puts it on the slider, another guy slides it to the end. And you can see we got, we're filling this up really quick, really quick. I'd say it's going to take about four yards of soil all together. So we've got two yards in the trailer. And we'll go back and get another load. And then down by the sump pump, we're going to gravel that area. So we want that water to perk. We've already got footer tiles installed. We want that water to get down into the pit. And it'll just flood right through there. Remember, this is water coming up, not coming down. It's coming up. That's the way all French drains work. They're not designed to pick up surface water. And you really need catch basins if you're outside to pick up surface water. Yeah, you can definitely, you know, say that it'll go through the sod and all those things, and it does. But it's so very you can see slow. we're bringing the buckets down to the crawl space opening. That's really the hardest part of this is getting the, anything you want to bring in, you have to set down into the opening. And then, of course, you have to climb in through the opening, bring things in. That's why we've got somebody that fills up buckets and sets them down outside to the person inside. And then they're going to set this on the slider and just slide one at a time. More sand on there, the better. You see how quick that goes. It's just so easy, so easy. The real, another tip, do not put your buckets together when you put them all down because <laughs> it gets stuck. And that just slides like butter, just like butter. So it gives it a push. If you have several guys, you know, the guy that's doing the shoveling, he's doing the most of the work because he's picking up these barrels, he's running them back to the crawl space opening. Switch off, take turns. Work as a team and you'll get this job done in just a okay, few Okay, so I unplugged the sump pump and the reason I do that is because I want to see how high this water rises. Where is the level of water in the ground? It's been off for about 15 minutes and you can see that water rising up. It's coming up. Remember when the sump pumps plugged in, it's taking that water out constantly. It just runs and runs and runs and it keeps it very dry. But because it's below sea level, we have constant water. And the reason that this happened is over the years, this home was built back in the 50s and someone added a sump pump probably in the 60s and then they continued to add sump pumps. And what that did, you can see we've already graded it, but it sucked all the soil from the crawl space down to their sump pumps, you know, over 40 years, it sucked out all the soil. So it's quite low now. In fact, where that water level is, that's the bottom of the footer right there. I mean, that's how much sand has come out of here. It used to be 
right here at the crawl space opening. That's how much soil disappeared here. Tremendous amounts of soil had got sucked out over 40 years. So what we're doing is we're re we're re-raising the grade down in the crawl space. We've got this section all done. Now we're doing the back section. We need about two more yards, maybe three more yards back there. And the reason I'm leaving this open is I want to put gravel around it. I've already perforated the pit. We're going to lift up the sump pump so that it doesn't sit quite as deep. And that way the pump doesn't run quite as often. What determines that is how high this water rises. Kind of confusing, but if you think about it, you'll understand it. So you can see our slider. This one's quite long. We're bringing the sand, the gravel sand in through the crawl space opening. And then we come down the slider and you can see it goes all the way, all the way back around to the back of the crawl space. But wow, so much easier than trying to carry a bucket through that <laughs> so, so much easier to slide them back there and then of course you have to lift them up and dump them but wow so much easier great idea you guys suggest you do this remember that you can bring your gravel in down the slider once you've dug that trench for your footer footer tile which sets you know the footer pipe is a french drain so you're going to put a base of gravel then you put your pipe then you put more gravel on the top bring that to grade so really a nice setup here save you a whole bunch of labor a whole bunch of labor Okay, it's looking real good. The movement, I just pulled a bucket out of there, but it looks like it's stopped. So that's the level of groundwater. And you can see, see how it's kind of getting muddy, but over here, that's, we've got to get this. We're about eight inches more. We're going to run gravel all around this area so that it can perk into the sump basin and the footer tiles are already installed. So it's not that hard of a job, but something that needs to be done. And again, remember what happened was the, the sump pumps over 40 year period or longer sucked all the soil out of this crawl space because they never put it in right to begin with. <laughs> they didn't put it in a basin, you know, I mean, it was just terrible when we got here, but you can go back and find that video and take a look. Okay, remember, there's a lot of pressure in this line, so as we loosen it, it's going to drain. Oh, not too bad this time. That's good. So I'm going to lift the pump up, and I'm going to put some bricks down in here to keep the pump higher. And we'll just cut this off to get the pump out of here. Remember, this pump's heavy. Try not to lift up on the rise or try to grab the handle of the pump to get it out. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's get some bricks down in here. See if we can get it high enough to slow down that pump. So we've got the bricks down in there. You can see that we raised that pump almost six inches. And that float, when it actuates right here, is still well below our new grade. It's going to be well below our new grade. We're all set. Now I just need to make a new measurement from the top of the check bow up to the no-hub to the discharge where we cord that wall and put it back together. I'm going to go ahead and set the no-hub. I made the cut here so you can see it. And then we're going to set, set a no-hub on here to make our connection. And we'll tighten up all these clamps. as tight as that drill can make it and we'll be ready to plug that pump back in nice. one, last, one last connection to make tighten up this clamp. okay so we're, we're pumping that water out remember what I did was I raised the pump by putting some bricks underneath of there so I shortened this um, riser by about six inches so we raised the pump six inches and it should be at a really good level now so that 
as we backfill with gravel out here, you see the water disappearing. It's all running into the basin that the pump won't actuate quite as often. And that's the object of filling this entire crawl space. We had to fill the entire crawl space with soil. It took about eight yards. What a job, what a job. But of course, we're doing that back corner back there. We're almost done. Yeah, the slider works really good, you guys. Remember, these buckets, between 60 and 70 pounds each, sand is very heavy and it's not wet but it's definitely moist and you can see you can see it back there it's just a conveyor belt without the rollers <laughs> but it still works so much better than trying to lift that stuff up best way i've found to you know, inexpensively to move things around in the crawl space gravel especially and if you go back and watch some of the older videos we've got you know several hundred videos of doing just this they happen to be in Charlotte um, you know now we're down here in Florida and we're still in Charlotte too Kevin runs our Charlotte office he does the same thing every day so our pump just shut off and you can see all the water disappeared completely I'm, I'm in the guy's ways here so I apologize but the pump shut off at a real good level this will only kick on now I don't know, maybe every hour, maybe every two hours, maybe once a day. Once we get this backfill, this is going to be great. Yeah, take a look, you guys. Watch how far you can slide this. I mean, that was it just less than a second. Where, as if you decided to push this, pick up a bucket and move it that far. I mean, that's ten times you're picking that bucket up. Get a great workout if you want to do it that way. <laughs> It really amazes me when I watch other people's videos of how they do things and you know they try to get you to use the machines and you know the excavators and all those things but you know what you can do this yourself and do it by hand um, rent a trencher you know, there's all kinds of ways to do things and nobody's got the right way so just to recap really quick um, what we're doing is we're raising the level of the crawl space because over a period of 40 plus years all of the sand had been sucked down to the sump pumps that they put in. Why did that happen? Because there was no basin and the pump just you know ran and ran and the water pulled the dirt slowly, slowly, slowly. It's called erosion. Um, it actually pulled so much soil out of the crawl space that we were about a foot below the footer. I mean, that's how much soil came out of here. So we raised it all back up and we reinstalled the pump. And remember, we reinstalled that pump. So it only kicks on now maybe once a day. It's, it's not running constantly because it was below sea level. The ocean is just a half a block away and a high tide. The groundwater is moving through, you know, all this area and that pump just ran and ran and ran. So we solved that problem. If you're going to put a sump basin in, it's really important. Use a good basin. Um, if you have these extension tubes coming off of your basin thinking that's a reservoir, all you're going to do is fill up even more sand into that basin or dirt, whichever you've got down you know, in the area that you're working. Um, use a standard basin. They go in basements up north. We adapted those basins about 15, 20 years ago and the, the pumps to do backyard pumps. Nobody was doing that. And yeah, I can remember putting in a Zoller uh, M. 53 the mighty mate it's only a third of a horsepower and it worked good but then we moved it up to the half horsepower about 12 years ago um, have been installing those for years now and wow does it work and i see more and more companies doing this that's great you know everybody learns from apple drains and that's why we're posting the video great you guys keep up the good work i mean you're doing great and watch our videos you're going to learn even more so, you know, it's really, really cool today in 2020, we have video chat, you know, we, we do the Skype, we do Messenger, we do WhatsApp, and you know, don't forget that your wife, your girlfriend, they're always thinking about you, and you should definitely think about them too. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, don't forget. Okay, so again, the float just actuated, and you can see the water that's still around the outside of the basin. Remember that we perforated this basin all around here. We're going to gravel this back up to this level. And 
that will that keeps that water underground basically um, it's going to keep this pump where it only runs you know maybe once a day maybe twice a day and you can see what we what we did was we shortened we took a section out of this riser and we put a no hub to hold it back together and it still discharges where we cord the wall if you remember from the first video we cord that wall this line goes all the way out about 140 feet goes under the sidewalk we cord the curb it discharges you know out to the to the street perfect um, but what we did find is that that first pump that we put in it was below sea level and the water the water just continued to run into the system and the pump ran for 5400 hours i mean non-stop non-stop what a great testimonial to zoller uh, find another pump that would run that long and then of course if you saw the next video i made um, i showed you how to, to make that pump work um, we do not resell the pumps we could give it back to the homeowner but what I do is I keep it for emergencies so we can pump out flooded crawl spaces with them. Um, these come with a three-year warranty. Guys, there's no better pump. Liberty makes a good pump, but <laughs> nothing is like the Zoller, Zoller M98. Half horsepower, pumps nearly 100 gallons a minute, and it may seem like it's going slow. But remember, there's groundwater that's all through here, all, all through the area. That's sucking that water. We also all already have our footer pipe installed here. So all the water that's, you know, all along the crawl space is all being pulled over to the sump basin. It's pumping hundreds of gallons, of, you know, it's really working. And it just kicked off. So we've got a great new level. And you can see the water still coming in. It's going to, you know, fill it up to the proper level when that float comes up it kicks on pump lifts it up and sends it out so yeah just to give you guys an idea of you know where we are we're on ormond beach i just walked up the hill there's the ocean beautiful even on a cloudy day and just on the other side of the hill as we go down that's where that house is and if you keep that in in relation you know, you've got a straight line from the water down to that house that crawl space is below sea level. The only thing bad about living this spot of Ormond Beach, there's no traffic lights on A1A for quite some distance. And you can see all the, all the cars. It's really hard to get across the road. Of course, it is you know, just after 12, so kind of lunchtime. And they're supposed to stop when someone comes across. But, of course, drivers are drivers everywhere across the country, right? So you can kind of take a look how far down we're going back to the house see the vans down there but remember where the ocean was you know it's about the same level if you went straight underground down to the vans same level hey this is chuck with apple drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something i guarantee you can do it have a great day Be sure to watch our next video, French Drain Scammers in Orlando, companies pretending to be Apple Drains.